Good evening, church. It is good to see you again. I am Gregory, your digital missionary here on the Wandering Wind Church. Um, today will be a bit of a different message. I was planning on continuing my Seven Letters to Seven Churches series. However, I'm going to be tabling that and probably releasing the next few, the last few parts on Wednesday nights instead of on Sunday nights. Um, however, today I want to talk about something that God has inspired me through. So, first of all, let's open up with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for your gracious mercy and love in our lives as we continue to learn more about your word and continue to share your word with others, share your word with the world, and just share our hope in you with those that we know. May our time here be blessed. May it serve a purpose and may it Give each and every one of us that listen wisdom and knowledge for the future. In your name, amen. So I recently started sleeping on the floor. I didn't do it because I had, I didn't have a bed or rather, you know, I didn't do it because the bed was broken or anything like that. I did it because my bed was causing me a problem. Now, for years I have had back issues. In fact, I think I started having back issues when I was about um, 12 years old, 13 years old. And so for years, I have done everything I can to try and help that problem, whether it was medication or a different mattress or a different bed or whatever else might have um, supposedly worked. I was trying every single cure, cure that I could possibly find on the market. And it didn't help me at all. In fact, it ended up being that my bed was causing me worse issues because I remember a couple of months ago, my friend Mark and I went on a camping trip, well, more of a retreat in, an, in a cabin, and the beds there actually helped my back feel better than what my bed at home was. So that was my first clue that maybe there was something wrong. So I did my three... I did my research, and I found that many people with back problems use mattresses that promise better health only to have them cause more problems. In fact, many people that have had back problems for years and have finally felt relief are those that started sleeping on Japanese-style floor mattresses where the foam was actually thinner than a traditional bed, and the floor itself provided more support for the spine and the other areas of the of the body. So one of the things that I figured is that companies claim to help you, but are selling you the problem and the solution in equal measure. Let me explain. First of all, the, the mattress industry and the bed industry. You have Serta, you have um you have nectar you have the the um the one mattress company that does the egg drop we have so many different mattress companies all s supposedly selling you the consumer the solution to all your sleeping problems whether it be insomnia narcolepsy um back issues snoring um whatever it may be they have a solution for every problem the only problem is, like I said, they're selling you the problem as well. Because a lot of times, people have found that memory foam and even the high-end stuff tends to actually cause more issues down the line than it solves in, this, in the short term. In fact, you can, you can kind of apply this to any industry. Look at the drug and prescription medication industry, where... You go into a doctor, you describe an illness, and rather than doing more testing to make sure you've got that illness, they push a pill on you because they get paid more to do that than to actually help you. And then in a month, when you come back for a follow-up appointment, you find that you've got several side effects from that medication, so they prescribe you medications for the side effects of your medication. I mean, are we seeing the problem here? Um... 
Again, I can go further. Self-help gurus and books that beat you down in your moment of need and bleed your finances dry, pretending to help you. Or even entertainment, which promises to cure boredom but opens your heart and mind to impure things. Even advertisements on television do it. You won't go out a day without seeing a questionable advertisement on most modern cable TV stations, which is why a long time ago I decided to stop watching cable TV. Um, you know, the biggest thing is we're not strictly forbidden from doing things. However, not everything that we do is good for us. In fact, 1 Corinthians 10, 23 and 24 puts this ecstatic, extremely well. It says in verse 23, Everything is permissible, but not everything is beneficial. Everything is permissible, but not everything builds up. No one is to seek his own good, but the good of the other person. And, you know, honestly, that is a thing that we continue to um, seek in our lives, is the balance between what is permitted and what is beneficial, what is good and what is better. Sometimes we settle for good instead of going for best, or um, passable instead of as good as we can get it. Because honestly, even in our walk with God, we tend to do that. You're not forbidden from only reading your Bible on Sunday mornings at church. But does that necessarily mean that's a good thing to do? Not really. I myself am guilty of that. I've been guilty of that for years where every time I walked into a church, that was the only time I opened my, my Bible that week was either on Wednesday night at Bible study or Sunday morning at church was the two times that I would actually open my Bible and, and actually read anything in it. And even then, I didn't understand what I read. I was just following along for the sake of participation. Um, and, you know, sin becomes the same thing for us in that, you know, the devil, Satan, uses, tem uses deception to sell the thing that is killing us in the guise of something that can cure our temporary problems. Let me give you some examples. If you're depressed, why not do drugs? They make you feel good in the moment, don't they? You know, if you're lonely, why not just go out and fornicate? You know, go out, find a nice girl, take her back to your house. It doesn't matter. Oh, it's just a temporary thing. If you're stressed, go drink. Maybe you engage in some violent, beha violent behavior. You know, just... Just do whatever makes you happy. Unhappy marriage? Well, that guy at your office is really nice to you. You could go ahead and cheat on your husband with him. I mean, all these are lies used to, to make us pursue the wrong thing with the wrong perspective. Thinking that that wrong thing will lead to a right feeling, which it won't. Many of us have fallen prey to that. I have fallen prey to that as well. When I was drinking and abusing my anxiety medication and trying to off myself with an overdose of my sleeping medication and just watching every single bit of pornography I could get my hands on because I thought, well, maybe this will fill, fill that hole. Maybe this will fill that gap in my life where I'm not feeling fulfilled. I'm not feeling happy. I'm feeling awful, and I need to do something to figure out how to feel better. If I did, if I had just thought about it and gotten a better perspective, you see, you see, here's the thing. Here's the thing. I wear these because I've got glaucoma, cataracts, and astigmatism, three different eye conditions that cause me to have absolutely horrible vision if I don't have these on. Well, honestly. All of us have a pair of glasses that we need to put on every day called our spiritual glasses. You know, if you think about it, if you're not looking at your situation in the right spirit, then you're going to see problems, you're going to see issues, and you're going to not be able to find the right solution for those problems. So how do we fix this? How do we fix this problem? Because it's a problem that we all face how do we get better? Well, 
here's the solution. Fix your eyes upon Jesus. Yeah, like that old like that old hymn, but actually there's a ver a Bible verse for it. Get this. Hebrews 12, 1 and 2 says, Therefore, since we also have such a large cloud of witnesses surrounding us, let us lay aside every hindrance and the sin that so easily ensnares us. Let us run with endurance the race that lies before us, keeping our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. For the joy that lay before him, he endured the cross, despising the shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Now, get this, get this. The pioneer and perfecter of our faith. He began it. He was the trailblazer that showed us the path. And so now, we need to keep our eyes on his example, on his image. And then we need to be that image. We need, through his grace and his power, we need to become the image of Christ in this fallen world. So that is very much a first step to getting there. It is, because honestly, if we don't get to that point, we don't have much of anything else as far as a proper spiritual perspective. Secondly, think only about good things. Now, when I, when I thought about this point, I remembered a story about a kid who had who was having terrible, terrible nightmares. She ended up screaming and running into her parents' bedroom every night and sleeping with them. And by about the fifth or sixth night, the mother was so darn tired of it that she finally came up with a solution. And she's like, okay, here you, here you go, honey. Before you go to bed, say this phrase until you fall asleep. I will not dream of bunnies. It's, it's a concept called reverse psychology, where you try not to think of something, and so you inevitably do think of that thing. It's why when we try and avoid negative thinking, we inevitably end up actually thinking negatively. Because when we try to not focus on something, we're actually focusing on it, so then it ends up being the main focus at the front of our brain, and that just causes issues. But when she did that, she changed the focus, and so then the nightmares went away. The nightmares didn't come back because she changed her focus. So how are we changing our focus? How are we changing what we are focused on? So in Philippians 4, 8, it says, Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, honorable, just, pure, lovely, commendable, if there is any moral excellence, and if there is anything praiseworthy, dwell on these things. Dwell on these things. Now, that is a very novel concept. You know, it is. And, you know, there's another Bible verse I want to look up really quick, and I'll tell you about it. Romans 12, 2 says, do not be conformed to this age, or in other translations it says, to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may discern what is the good, pleasing, and perfect will of God. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. How do we renew our minds? How do we get to that point? By reading the word of God. The Word of God has a living component to it. It speaks to us through the Spirit when we read it. So if you've received the Spirit of God, which I hope you have, then when you read the Word of God, the Spirit uses the Word to speak directly to your spirit. So that that way then you can know what God's will is for you. That is what it means by saying renewing your mind. It's replacing the garbage that the world puts in there with the goodness that God has given us in the Word. Um, I have a friend, Dougie, who um, likes to say this phrase, and I actually love it. I actually make that my um, constant kind of application of different ways to think about things. But he says, 
when we change the things we look at, the things we look at change. Now, I don't know if that's an original quote by him or not, but either way, basically it's talking about changing what your focus is on so that your perspective allows you to persevere in hardship. When you no longer focus on your worry and start focusing on his wonder, everything changes. Because when we stop worrying and start wondering about where God is moving and what God is going to be doing, that is the point of all of this. I mean, Jesus himself even says, do not worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow has enough trouble of his own. Don't worry about it because it's not going to add another day to your life, another inch to your height, another hair on your head. Depending on your translation, it could be a number of things that it might not add. But anyway, it doesn't add anything to you, no matter what translation. And honestly, that is a, that is a very, very powerful command. Do not worry. Now, will we sometimes worry? Yes, but how can we apply this particular message to that worry? I got three points for you. I got three points. Number one, what am I worrying about or dealing with in my life? And how can I change the narrative so that it focuses on Jesus and not my problem? That is a very powerful thing because honestly, if we take the focus off of our problems and put them on Jesus, Jesus takes care of the rest. I'm, I am living proof of that because every day that I do that, I have a better day than when I do focus on my issues, which honestly, even in the last month, I have. So honestly, I know the difference night and day between the two. Number two, where can I faithfully pray to have God intervene in my situation? And how might that allow me to help others going through the same thing? You see, when we target pray, not just, oh God, if I if it's in your will, please help me with my problems. No, actually address them point by point, issue by issue, because he wants to know what we want from him and what we need from him, you know. He already knows, but he wants us to voice it so that, that way we're allowing him to change it. He doesn't do anything without us allowing him because he doesn't force force himself on us. He's a gentleman, and a gentleman does not force himself or impose himself on others, but rather asks. And then finally, number three, what has God carried me through in my life? Question one. This is a two-part question. What has God carried me through in my life? Think about it. All the, all your worst days that you've ever had, you've gotten through because of him. Because of him. And now question two, part two. How does that give me hope that he will carry me through this as well? Because honestly, if you know his track record, and you know that he is the same yesterday, today, and forever, then you know he'll carry you through the next thing as well. Whether that is to keep you here on this earth or to take you home. You know what? If he takes you home, praise be to God, you get to be in glory faster than I do. And honestly, I'm a little bit jealous. Not in a sinful way, just in a, dang, I got to wait a little bit longer. All right, God. But you know, <laughs> you know, that is the thing. That is the thing. If we change our perspective, then we change our approach to life and then we change our point in life that is the biggest thing that is the godly thing to do so anyway as i end this message i just want to thank you all for watching listening sharing subscribing whatever you do even just donating a little bit thank you so much having a wonderful day and let's just let me just pray you out heavenly father thank you so much for the gift of your love and grace so that we don't have to worry about what's going on in the world right now. We don't have to worry about politics or finance or anything else like that. We don't have to worry about the gas prices because you already know what's going on and you know how to carry us through even when we're dealing with stuff like that. So thank you so much for your grace in this moment. I just ask that you would bless each and every one of the listeners that are hearing the sound of my voice, so that they might be able to be strengthened in your spirit, so that they might be able to have your comfort, your joy, your peace, 
in whatever moment they're in, whatever situation they're dealing with, whatever troubles they come across, may you be magnified and glorified by giving them a way through. Because you are the way maker, you are the chain breaker, you are the great physician and the healer and the salvation through Jesus Christ. You are the way, the truth, and the life. And we thank you for your goodness, your provision, your grace, and your love. It's in your name that we pray. Amen. Thank you so much for watching. Again, if you want to donate or support this ministry in any way, there will be links down in the description below for our t-shirt shop, as well as for my um, uh, coffee page where you can donate directly. I would appreciate anything that you can do, whether it's supporting the channel or just subscribing. Thank you and have a wonderful day. God bless you. And I'll see you again soon.